Ice climb, you see it from the valley bottom. It's this white stripe, you just cannot miss it. To my mind, it begs to be climbed. You're climbing on something that won't be there for very long. Even the biggest ice climbs fall down or melt at the end of the winter and they're gone until maybe 10 years later. My name is Rafael Slavinsky and I'm a professor of physics at Mount Royal University in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I don't think I apply specific principles of physics when I think about ice and how ice will respond and uh, calculating forces, that sort of thing. I think what physics and in general, my background as a scientist does, is it gives me a, an analytical mindset. There may be times when, for whatever reason, I'm scared or not into something. I try to analyze those feelings and I try to think, is there a reason to feel that way? Or there is no reason to go down, there is no reason to turn around. Objectively, everything's fine. So I, I do try to keep that kind of objective mindset and I try to approach my climbing that way. Because I've been climbing for, for a while and I'd like to keep climbing for a while, I try to limit my exposure to the really big risks. The more I climb, the less I'm afraid of falling, the, the more I'm afraid of things that might fall on me. So, for example, something like climbing under seracs. I've done a bit of that, but on the whole, I try to avoid that because you'll get away with it once, twice, three times, but if you keep doing it, it'll catch up to you. The general public perceives as the risks in climbing are generally not the actual risks. So people will see a sport climber on some giant overhang and they'll say, that's crazy. Whereas in fact, it's about as safe as it gets. And for sure, even if you're a conservative climber, just by going to the mountains, you're subjecting yourself to things outside of your control. That's kind of the definition of mountain adventure in a way. But I think you can still pick and choose. Well, I guess the reason why I don't consider what I do training is that I, I think of training as something fairly structured. And I rarely do anything terribly structured. Mostly I just go climbing. I like to think that I can still get better. And I know that climbing shouldn't just be about pushing your limits and about getting better, but I can't help it. A big part of the reason why I climb is for the challenge and for the satisfaction of doing something today that I was not up to yesterday. So I know that at some point I will reach a point where I'll quit getting better. In fact, I'll start regressing. I think I'll have to somehow accept the fact that we age. I somehow I have to come to terms with it. Hopefully, mountains by themselves mean enough to me that I'll keep enjoying them long after I'll start down the other side of the mountain.